Hey everyone, well, we are in the middle of November, getting close to Thanksgiving, and I thought with the holidays coming so close, let's do something small today. And then I was also thinking what would be fun that we could incorporate into Thanksgiving. So maybe you have guests coming over or you wanna have name cards at your dinner table for Thanksgiving dinner or maybe brunch. This is a really fun way to create a lot of little mini fall themed cards in just a little bit of time. So last night I got home, I was playing around with the, my favorite fall colors and then thought we would have fun painting together today. So today I am painting a little bird wreath and then another wreath with a lot of twigs and berries but there's so much variety and I'll show you all the things that I'm thinking of. Let's get going. Hey everyone, well, welcome back to another week of painting sessions with The Creative Season. This is Melissa. Um, I thought for Thanksgiving, which is next week, if you can believe it, the next few weeks, we'll do a couple of fun painting projects that are kind of in line with hospitality and painting and welcoming people. And I thought what we might do this week is create these really cute, um, cards and what I want to do is I wanted to get something that was could be functional so if you have people coming over and maybe you want to write them a little note that you leave by their bedside or you want to create even these could be really cute um, dinner table uh, placemats right you could write someone's name or even just have these around the table this is just a really fun way to incorporate your love of art and creating with um, this beautiful fun fall theme and so what I really I really love wreaths and I haven't done any fall wreaths but I thought you know what if we just did some mini ones so let's go ahead and paint today I had been coming went, went through all of these last night um, when I was just kind of playing and watching a new show it was um, and I thought this would this would be fun right so this one I put a Bible verse on the back with some leaves so I wanted to just to kind of play with these and think well maybe I'll make the use these as snail mail too I could write a cute little note inside and send it but I was really thinking of hospitality too just having these around the home or at the dinner table when people come over so a lot of different styles that I was playing with and I thought we would just do two today and I thought this one was really cute with the bird and so I thought okay let's go ahead and create that cute little bird wreath this is a cute one a little bird sitting in a wreath you'll notice too I have a lot of similar colors that I'm using this is a really fun full leaf wreath and so what we're going to do is I'm going to pull up just a couple of colors we're going to do these really fun wreaths I'm going to show you I was using watercolor this small um, watercolor paper from Masters Touch Hobby Lobby's brand just really reasonable price what I do before I take them down is I take out the piece of paper and I actually go ahead and fold it before I start painting because I want that crease to remind me of where my lines are so I just crease it down like this and then you can see right here I taped it and you can see the crease lines really show off which is great and I know where I'm starting and where I'm finishing as far as my painting goes. So we're gonna grab, I'm gonna get a micron pen so you can see it well, but feel free to grab a pencil if you prefer that. There's my micron pen. We're gonna do some splattering. Again, I'm gonna be using sap green, some magenta, burnt umber, raw sienna, and some gamboge. You can use whatever, 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 I can't even talk, whatever colors that you would like to. So I'm gonna come, it's a little bit my shadow, huh? We're gonna come and pull some of these things back. I, You notice on this one, there was like a lot of white, um, which it was fun, but I might want some more color. So I might do that wreath as well. It's a super twiggy wreath. I just like things sometimes that are easy, right? That are easy and fun. So let's go ahead and we're gonna just sketch out this twiggy wreath. So what I usually start out by doing is this is almost like a large, almost like an egg shape wreath. And you've seen those in the store. Again, I love the Twiggy wreaths this time of year. In fact, for my Christmas wreath, I'm gonna to get together with a couple of friends. We're gonna make wreaths. It's been a while since we've done that. And I'm thinking about getting a Twiggy wreath, not one of like the, the pine wreaths. I am gonna pretend that there's a nail here that it's being hung on. Feel free to do that or not. And then I can do some twigs around it. And then again, I am just working my way around, just doing really light sketches. Now, what I wanna do here, if you ever think it's a little cattywampus, just fix it as far as adding extra branches, which is kind of fun to do too. I always like to make sure I've got branches sticking out every which way, which I think makes it fun, kind of bending them around as well, right? 
as they do. All right. This will be a little bit deeper in here. Now I'm going to take my little bird here. And the little bird, real simple, um, just I had found this little guy on Pinterest, which is sometimes my favorite to go place when I'm looking for new things to sketch out. Or I want something real specific, like this sweet little bird. So I'm just doing that very nice, simple shape. Make sure the head is nice and round, right? Nice little round head here, and I've got the tail, the way he's shaped, I can see that back tail feather, and I'm gonna have that tail fe fe feather sticking out at the end. Let me bring this in a little bit closer for you, and I will back up the camera as well, so you can see that really nicely. Okay, so that's really cute, right? And he's gonna be looking out on the side, and so we'll do a nice little beak coming out right there, hello little guy. And the eye is just pretty centered and close to the beak. Make sure you're not too far away and make sure that eye is nice and big. Okay, and if you feel like, oh, I'm, I need to make his head like a little bit taller, go right ahead and do that. Sometimes the birds, you know, they get a little attitude of their own and then I'm gonna do its cute little, usually I wait for the, um, the feet till the end so then I can do some twigs, right? Because I want to make it look like it's sitting on one of my twiggies. Okay, that's really cute. So we're going to go ahead. And you know what? If it doesn't quite turn out as cute as you want it, don't even worry. When we put color on, it's going to be absolutely darling. All right, and I'm just going to have them sticking out a little bit more like that. Okay, so there's that one. And what I'm going to do now too is I'm going to go ahead on this guy over here. I don't quite need to do as much sketching. And again, I'll pull this back a little bit more so you can see that. I think for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and create the twiggy wreath. And what I want to do, my biggest, the biggest thing for me is making sure my interior is still kind of a center because sometimes what I end up, it just turns into like a really weird looking circle, if you know what I mean. So I usually do kind of a center like this, and then I just start kind of really loosely with the micron pen, putting out some leaves. And then on this one, I'm gonna be just doing like clusters of berries. So again, I'm not really, and then maybe some, some of those flowers that kind of, that kind of are drooping from the berries and really just kind of making it up. If you have a specific flower that you really love, add in the flowers that you love. It's really fun just to do your own little style of wreaths, right? And then again, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna have some things sticking out here as well. But I keep this part pretty loose. I kind of really just want to create that baseline. Do make sure you have an odd number of like bunches of leaves. So I've got four, so some are two. I'm probably gonna maybe over here I'm just gonna have some more of those really sweet flowers, those kind of berryish flowers sticking out. There we go. Okay, so where are we on time? We're doing good. Now we did spend some extra time sketching, but you're gonna find the painting of these because they're so very, very tiny, right? We're just basically working on a four by six. Really, it's a two by three because we've halved it. And we're gonna do splattering on the back is what I'm gonna do, or maybe some leaves. Like I said, with this one, I had done a verse with the splatters and then some leaves. So you can keep it very, very simple. But I do want to, before I start working here, let me grab the brush. I'm going to use my second to largest brush. And what I want to do is I want to lay down some background here. So for one of these, I'm going to do um, a gamboge and just lay some paint down. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go ahead. I'm just laying some paint down around around the edge, kind of going up to my crease. If you feel like it's too dry, just grab some water and paint around. I'm gonna also just paint down here. And I'm gonna paint it in gamboge because I'm gonna make this little guy, the little sweet little bird, is gonna be mostly magenta. So with a little bit of that gamboge on its chest. So I'm gonna, again, just kind of move it around here. And then I'm also probably gonna do some splattering, but not quite, not quite yet. I'm gonna take the smaller brush pick up some gamboge, maybe some cadmium yellow. We're gonna just let that little bit on the chest, right? We're gonna actually show off the color in its tail. So I'm just gonna work around like this. There we go, and that looks super, super cute. We're just doing a little bit at a time. I'm gonna come in here now. I have 
feel like I have a bit of shadow on here that I'm not quite sure where that's coming from. Yes, I do. Let me move this. I think that's a shadow. One has to be careful in the winter light. It's so much different than the air lights. There we go. Ha ha, it was my, the other art pieces. So we're gonna move this to the side. So hopefully you can see that a bit better now. So now to on this side, what I'm gonna come and do is I think on that one, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna start laying down my brown. So I've got some burnt sienna. We'll maybe do a little bit of a lighter, more of a white background on this, but I am gonna go around and just start with my twigs and some of the sage brush that we're thinking might be on here. I'm gonna add in some green as well. We're gonna do a combination thereof. And you can see I am going in pretty light. I'm not going too heavy at all. I wanna just start with the brown and then I'm gonna do the green on top of it. I am gonna go ahead, grab my magenta. I'm just really loving this magenta. If you have dioxazine purple, that would look really nice too. So I'm gonna go ahead on these flowers and start adding that in. And maybe I'll even add some purple so you can see what that looks like as well into some of these flowers just to create a bit of a drop. You can see too, I'm not coloring them in totally. I am leaving them as well just for, for so you can have that light play off of them. And then we have our berries. I've got some orange berries here. And you know, I may add in a little bit of red I've got my coffee sitting next to me, so I need to make sure I don't drop my pen or the paintbrush into the coffee. Who does that, right? Do you also do that where I drop it into the coffee and then no more coffee? <laughs> I've got to get a fresh cup. Okay, so that looks really nice. Now, we are using a sap green this morning or today because sap green is that beautiful muted green that is so, so nice in the fall palette and looks beautiful with purples and browns. So I'm also on this, I had seen this gorgeous wreath that almost had like the, um, it wasn't thrush, but it was just almost that the, the reeds that you see in like the pond or in a lake, the real tall ones, and they had incorporated these into a wreath and it was just lovely. So I'm gonna play off of that a little bit too and just pull out. Again, I just kind of have a lot of fun thinking to myself, if I had created a wreath and I had all my supplies and I'm so excited to do some wreaths with friends because one of them is really good at incorporating different dried florals into it. So that's gonna be fun and incorporating bows and she just has a great eye for it. And you know, it's always fun to do stuff with someone who has a good eye for these things. I can sometimes picture it in my mind, but and put it even on painting, paint it, but then putting it in real life like a wreath, it can be a bit more challenging. So I'm super excited about joining them and doing, doing joining my friends and having that activity together. Okay, and you can find too, if you find that everything starts to merge a little bit, then go ahead and just move over to the other painting. That's really the fun of it. So now I'm gonna come back and again, I've got both raw umber and burnt sienna out. Raw umber is a bit darker, so I'll do like the nail here and some raw umber. And then I'm gonna come around too and just start laying in some of my branches and some of maybe the darker ones down here too. Uh-oh, that was its little, that is its tail feather. So I don't want any of my brown in there because that's gonna be a beautiful magenta. And I'm kind of working on the base of one of the cameras. The camera stands, so moving around here. And you can see I'm not coloring in with the paint, right? I'm really working around. I'm gonna add in another brown. I just want this one to have that dry just a little bit so it doesn't merge completely when I add it in. Now I am gonna pick up that magenta and let's go ahead on that background feather, the one that's kind of curving, the flying feather I guess. I'm gonna go ahead and lay that down and I want it to be a little bit bolder. And I'm just gonna drop that paint in here. Isn't that beautiful? I'm not gonna paint it in all the way. And then I'm even gonna go around the edges and I'm gonna let it seep a little bit inside. Put a little bit on the head. Super cute. I really think that's very lovely. I'm gonna come back to, we'll get some of the gamboge and just bring it around here. And so that color will blend. It'll kind of create a bit of a shadowing effect too. And that's really pretty. That is really, really lovely. Okay, now I'm gonna come back and you're thinking to yourself possibly, 
that you just want a little bit more of a pop. We're gonna add some pop with some splatters. I've been just really loving splattering this year. I had rediscovered my love for splatter art with that new course that I released, or the, it was a really redesigned course from a couple years ago, added some new things to it. And I have just really loved the beauty that splattering gives to art. And so what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna do some splattering on the back of these. So I'm just gonna take that brown and lay that down there as well as over here. This will end up being the back that we're gonna turn around. I'm gonna pick up some magenta over here and then splatter around on top of here. And not even the whole thing, but just in the corner. And over here as well, you can see I wanna splatter. It's still a bit wet, so you can see where the splatters kind of merge. And so maybe let yours dry for a little bit and then come back. The other thing you can do too is just dab around if you felt like, oh, the splatters didn't look quite how I wanted them. But they showed up very nicely in the middle here where I had originally done that beautiful um, gamboge. You can see kind of almost a shadowing because the gamboge is darker here. Now I might want a little bit of that gamboge here underneath that um, bird just to show that off a little bit. Or what I can come, come and do, I have that magenta, I'm gonna lay it in the brown and that'll just add a bit of a shadow. And so I'm moving that around. I'm kind of being careful though. We have the beautiful tail feather. I'm probably gonna come back after this completely dries and I'll add a little bit more brown to the stem, but I'm afraid that the purple and the brown will merge too much right there. And then it will look like a solid mass. We don't want that. But I could take some of the gamboge over here and just almost just drop it in as a shadow effect, even down here. And that looks just really, really nice. Almost an illumination, maybe more than a shadow around the bird. That looks really pretty as it's looking off in the distance. And then I am gonna grab some gamboge and I'll splatter that on the back, which is really, really sweet. Okay, I love that. I think that's super cute. I'm gonna come back over here. I want some more green. I want that to be a little bit more, mm, just deeper. And if you want, if it's too sappy for you, like you think you could always add some hooker's green to it and that will cool it off just a little bit. But I'm gonna come back over here where the colors have merged because I wanna darken them up. And again, I'm gonna add some detail using that tip of the, the brush to really create those edges, those clean edges that I love. And just moving that around, that looks really nice. If you won't even wanna do some leaves add coming off, and that again, that round tip of adding that detail work, you don't have to paint the whole thing in green this looks really cute. I do want to come back over here and add in a little bit of the darker brown. So maybe I'll even pick up some of that raw umber, which is a more flat color. It doesn't quite sing as well as the burnt sienna, but it definitely gives a good foundation. Um, it's a really nice, you can see that, right? It's just a darker color. And of course we would have some twiggies sticking out. So I'm just gonna add that in right there, little twigs. And you can see how this is gonna come around really, really nicely. Now I told you I was gonna add some of the dioxazine purple. So I'm gonna grab that now. And I'm gonna just put dab a little bit of purple and then add a few more flowers of purple over here. You could just fill it up. You can make this as clean or as kind of abstract as you'd like. It's really a lot of fun, right? I'm gonna add a few more in there. And then for sure, take that splatter and splatter on the back. Splatter over here on that green. The splatters are small because our paintbrush is small and we're keeping it pretty close to the ground or to the area of the, the painting. Then I'm gonna grab my gamboge and I'm just gonna just do some more popping just to get that color of those berries a little bit more. I might even do a couple in here. It's kind of abstracty. Maybe it's a berry, maybe it's some flowers. And then finally too, we'll do some splatters there at the bottom and then up at the, bo the top. And that looks really, really pretty. These are super simple to create. And again, they're gonna, once you're finished with them, they'll be super cute to just create and add to your guests 
maybe a little uh, note on the inside, or again, dinner plates or, or uh, name, name cards at the dinner party. Super fun, very fun. You can do a bunch of these two in just a short period of time. So I would love to see what you're creating. Definitely let me know what you're painting this Thanksgiving. And if you're incorporating your art, into your hospitality. All right, you guys, I'm gonna see you next week. And next week, the day before Thanksgiving, I'm gonna have a special watercolor journal project. So it's gonna be very reflective, very fun, and I think you're going to love it. I will see you soon.